Good evening and welcome to another edition of Banana Slug News. I'm Jessica Stokes. And I'm Christian Calderon. We have a nice variety of stories tonight, so let's get to the news. Slugs, did you know that UCSC is home to an amazing marine laboratory? The Long Marine Laboratory is known throughout the marine research community for its innovative marine mammal research. Audrey Milo reports with the story. I'm standing here reporting from the Long Marine Laboratory, an oceanside facility located on a coastal site overlooking Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. The lab provides facilities for scientists to perform research. Also inside is the Seymour Marine Discovery Center, the lab's public education facility. Let's go inside and check it out. I'm Steve Davenport. I'm the managing director of Long Marine Lab. Long Marine Lab is a, uh, a bunch of facilities, buildings, seawater system, uh, outdoor pools, aquarium rooms, laboratories, some teaching facilities, uh, and a lot of support space uh, for field operations in the marine environment. We are um, a facility of the Institute of Marine Sciences, uh, IMS, or the Institute of Marine Sciences, is an organized research unit on our campus at UCSC. So we have uh, faculty and scientists from a number of different departments that are affiliated with us that use our support in our facilities. Boats, our, our scientific scuba diving uh, training program, uh, our seawater system here at the marine lab and laboratories with flowing seawater through them, marine mammal pools for holding uh, research animals on site and so forth. I got involved down here at the Marine Lab um, just because I have work study program and I was just looking through the list of work study jobs you can get and uh, this one came up. Um, I work for Pisco Intertidal Lab and we're studying bivalves like shellfish, mussels, um, clams and I pretty much most of the time sit on a microscope and pick tiny microscopic ones out of sand but I also do field work with them too. I lead tours of the Seymour Center and the ensuing campus Long Marine Laboratory. Seymour Center consists of this building which is on the campus of Long Marine Lab which is affiliated with UCSC's marine science. We've got a touch tank that we've got right here. We've got a series of aquariums. We've got hands-on interpretive centers for all different ages and we've got our personnel who's here to help you and an amazing gift shop. I'm an aquarium assistant. And what are you doing right now? I'm just uh, feeding the jellies. Really? How do you do that? Um, what we do is we put in some little tiny nauplia and we put them in through here and we just squeeze them in with a little pipette. And then they go around in the water column and the jellies grab the How many different times ones. Do you do uh, once a day. If you would like to come visit the Long Marine Laboratory and Seymour Marine Discovery Center but have no money, that's not a problem because UC Santa Cruz students get in for free. I'm Audrey Milo reporting for Banana Slug News. Thank you, Audrey. Walking down Pacific Avenue, one is soon immersed in the unique atmosphere that downtown Santa Cruz has to offer. But are large-scale chain businesses threatening locally owned ones and overtaking Santa Cruz retail districts? Or do these chains offer new and desired products that truly appeal to the Santa Cruz market? Let's go to Noel Paris with more on the issue. I'm here in downtown Santa Cruz investigating local and chain businesses and the impact they have on one another. Though there are many chain and local businesses operating in Santa Cruz, the controversy surrounding the opening of borders so close to Bookshop Santa Cruz truly demonstrates why this issue has led to such a heated debate. We spoke with the general manager of the borders downtown, Mike Jackson, and here's what he had to say. Uh, one of the, one of the um, big reasons that there was a lot of local support for us is because 
um, you know, freedom of choice is also, you know, a very important thing. And uh, a lot of people in town didn't feel like um, Bookshop was very responsive to their needs as customers. So you know, we spent the last seven years kind of trying to actually illustrate to Santa Cruz what Borders is about and, you know, what, you know, the selection and service and, you know, atmosphere of what a Borders store would bring to the downtown community, whether you're talking about small businesses or you're talking about larger, you know, larger stores. Um, you know, I think that we have a lot to offer. We do giving literature, you know, giving entertainment to people, you know, giving something that's going to make them think and grow, you know, is, is a wonderful thing. Um, we've always said that we really think there should be a good mix of um, national, regional, and chains and local businesses with an emphasis on local businesses. We think there's a place for a few of other things as long as it's kind of the right fits in with our community values. Um, We've been thankful if we were going to have to do this fight with a chain store that we could do it in Santa Cruz because people are so supportive of local business in Santa Cruz and specifically supported of us. Um, We went through the earthquake with people in Santa Cruz where literally they walked into a building that had collapsed and saved books for us and we worked out of a tent for three years while, um, while the downtown is being rebuilt. People have gone through a lot for us. They've saved our store many times over, and so they, we know that they, we could get their support when borders came in. On the same time, there's um, a lot of tourists who come into town who don't know that situation. A lot of the students come into town and don't necessarily know the history of the store, and they recognize borders from their hometown, and I think we've lost a lot of that business. So it's taken a significant chunk out of our business to have to compete with borders. So a number of local businesses have gotten together and started an organization called Think Local First, which is um, a membership-based organization where we are working on educating the consumer about the issues surrounding local businesses and how it's important for consumers to understand that where they spend their money matters to the sustainability of the community. We donate to local nonprofits, our managers and owners live in the local community, and um, the money stays here, the profit stays in the community. But how do Santa Cruz residents feel about chains coming into the community? Um, I guess I have a mixed feeling about it because I know that you know, people like the convenience that they offer when they come into the community, but I think it drives out a lot of the local businesses, and I think that's a shame. So. What do I think about chain businesses in Santa Cruz? Well, I think on one hand we are Santa Cruz, and there is, we need to fulfill that need to protect the Santa Cruz identity of local mom-and-pop shops, of local economy. At the same time, we are part of a greater whole, which is America. And we are a nation of, of freedom, of capitalism, and I, I don't think it's quite fair some of the rap that some of the big businesses have gotten, for example, Borders. Um, yes, we need to protect logos in Bookshop Santa Cruz, but not at the expense of freedom. I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I love small businesses, and um, I really do a lot of business with the small businesses, but I also realize that we have a tax base and the city is supported by some of the bigger businesses. So I see the necessity for it, but I really would rather they not. The battle between movements to keep business local and independent and efforts for chain expansion will continue to rage. But in true American capitalist fashion, the consumer will inevitably determine the market outcome. This has been Noelle Paris reporting for Banana Slug News. Back to you in the studio.